In this section, we are going to be looking at non-ideal gas behavior. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the physical factors that lead to deviation from ideal gas behavior, explain how these factors are represented in the Van der Waals equation, define compressibility, and describe how its variation with pressure reflects non-ideal behavior, and quantify non-ideal behavior by comparing computations of gas properties using the ideal gas law and the Van der Waals equation. Real gases do not behave exactly as would be expected by the ideal gas law. And that's because of assumptions that are made in terms of how gases behave that are not always entirely true. One way to look at the deviation from ideal gas is to look at what is called the compressibility factor, which is labeled Z. So the compressibility fa factor looks at the volume of my actual gas at a given temperature and pressure and compares it to the molar volume of the ideal gas at the same temperature and pressure. Um, so if you look at this graph down here, you can see that an ideal gas is represented by this light blue line with a compressibility of 1. That would be where the molar volume of the gas is the same as the molar volume of the ideal gas. And there are times when it's at least relatively close to ideal at very, very low pressures. And then it starts going farther away from that. Particularly at very high pressures, the deviation becomes even more and more great from ideal. The reason for this is when we look at what we consider an ideal gas, we assume that the particles have no volume. Now, in reality, gas particles are really far apart from each other, so often the volume of the atoms themselves is negligible. Ideal gas particles also have no intermolecular forces. But in reality, there are intermolecular forces between gas particles. Now, it's under some conditions a better assumption than other, uh, under other conditions. So real gases will behave more ideally when I have high temperatures and low pressures. That's going to get the particles really far apart so that we can ignore the volume of the atom itself as well as the attraction between the atoms because if they're really far apart from each other, they don't experience much of that attractive force. Now, if we're under conditions where things do not behave ideally, then in order to get a good answer, we really need a different equation. And one of these equations that's used is called the Van der Waals equation. So the Van der Waals equation P takes PV equals nRT, the ideal gas law, and it makes a correction on the pressure and the volume factors of this. Because if the pressure is really high, well, then the particles are close together. Or if the volume is really small, then the particles are closer together. So instead of just PV equals nRT, we have P plus A, which is a constant for any given gas, times N squared, the number of moles, divided by V squared. This corrects for the attractive forces between the molecules. And then V minus NB, N is again the number of moles, and then B is a constant for any given gas that corrects for the volume of the molecules. So we have this corrected P term times this corrected V term equals nRT. And if you notice, if we have a very small number of moles, well, this term ends up, the NB ends up canceling out and we're left with just V. Well, if we have a very small number of moles, almost zero, this term would also cancel out, and we would have the PV equals nRT that we had before. So with a very small pressure and a very high temperature, with those particles very far apart, the ideal gas law does work. This would still give us a slightly more accurate answer, but it's not 
as important when we're under conditions where gases behave more or less ideal. But in the conditions where it doesn't behave ideally, then these factors become even more important.